name is Cliff de Guzman, and I'm Vice President of Engineering here at Big Switch Networks. We recently moved our headquarters to this new office space here in Santa Clara, California. And today, we're going to talk to you about our move, and more specifically, our data center move. Our data center had close to 100 racks, which included equipment from our office network infrastructure, our engineering test beds, as well as our sales and support equipment. So it served pretty much all functions of the company. It was very critical to our daily operations. As you can imagine, moving a data center or a lab of this size can be very challenging, painful, and difficult. The planning alone can take months. It can take weeks to bring up test beds and actual move, physical move, to happen. Today, I'm going to share with you our experience and show you how quickly we were able to move and bring up our data center. I'll ask my colleague Brandon to join us because he was actively involved in the move. He should be upstairs. Let's check his queue. Hey Brandon, you have time to join us? Yeah, absolutely. How's your day going today, Cliff? Oh, doing great. How are you doing? Doing well, keeping busy. So first, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Jair. I started at Big Switch as a business operations intern, and I recently converted to full-time. So I'd like to share with our audience our experience with our data center move. And since you were actively involved, I figured you can uh, maybe give your insight and share your experience. Yeah, absolutely. So I remember our first meeting, um, you know, planning and everything we had to do for the move. And there was just so much equipment, and I didn't know really where to start. But um, it was relatively a really easy process, and you know we got it done, and we documented all on video, and I'd like to show it to you. Okay, great. Let's see it. Here we go. So here, if you take a look, is our old data center with all the equipment that we had to move. We had movers come in to unrack and package up the equipment. They shrink wrapped the equipment so it was protected. Then we had the movers transport the equipment to the new location. This is what our new location looks like. All the racks are prepped and ready for use. So I had a one page bring up instructions for each test bed. Here's the one for the first QA test bed that I brought up. As you can see, for this test bed, I needed two servers, two spawn switches, and six leaf switches. So the first thing is to get a couple of the servers and rack them up. Here, you can see me racking the first one. And here's the second one. Then I racked the switches, noting the MAC addresses for each one. First the spine switches, and then the leaf switches. The next step is to connect everything to the management switch. So using the ethernet cables, I connected the two servers to the management switch. and then connected all the switches to the same management switch. For the switches, the management port is on the front side. Then I had to connect the switches using DAC cables. I connected each pair of the leaf switches, and all leaf switches to the two spawn switches. When making the connections, it's convenient that I could use any port on the switches. After making the physical connections, I powered up the servers and connected the monitor and keyboard. I proceeded to configure the servers as active and standby controllers. I used the info from the bring up instructions, such as the IP address, gateway, and the DNS server.
I also gave it a cluster name and description. I proceeded to do the same thing for the second server, and I configured it to join the other controller that I just set up. Then, I was ready to access the controller using the GUI. Here's our landing page. Clicking on the fabric tab brought me to the physical fabric page. Here, you can see me add the switches to the fabric by clicking the plus button next to the spine and leaf switches. To add a switch, I just had to select the MAC address from the list that corresponds to the switch that I'm adding. Then give it a switch name. I proceeded to do the same for the other switches. For the leaf switches, I also put each pair into its own group by entering its rack number. After adding all the switches, I hit the Show Links button at the top left of the screen. This will display the fabric links that I previously connected. So looking at this page, I realized I actually made a wrong connection. The GUI showed that both fabric links on one leaf switch were connected to the same spine switch. As you can see, the top left of the screen also indicates that there were errors. I feel like this is very useful because it gives the end user immediate feedback if there's anything wrong with the physical connections. So I went back and fixed the connections, knowing exactly what I did wrong thanks to the GUI. As the fabric page in the GUI refreshed, it began to display the correct connections that I just fixed. I then went back to the main page. I saw that everything was okay, which is also indicated by a system okay message at the top left. All the switches are also showing up correctly in the inventory. And that was it. And then I just followed the same instructions to get the rest of the test beds running. Great, that was a nice video. Thanks for sharing. You got it. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share with our audience today? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I really liked how I can use any port on the switches. That was super helpful. Um, the workflow for bringing up the fabric was incredibly easy to follow. And the immediate feedback I got from the GUI was really nice. Um, this entire process took less than an hour. It was great. It was really interesting for me to see, you know, what our customer would go through when they buy a product. Awesome. Thanks a lot for all your help with the data center it. move, and thanks for joining us today. But don't just take his word for it. Test drive our products by going to labs.bigswitch.com and imagine the possibilities. Thanks for tuning in.